but uh, I would like to just briefly introduce my team, the uh, printed parts team, um, and uh, explain just briefly what, what it is we do here. Um, with an organization this size, there are an awful lot of parts that need to be printed, and it is uh, our responsibility to oversee that effort. Um, so we will build parts for our uh, pre-sales efforts to, uh, uh, to help sell machines, we build benchmarks. We also build parts for those customers whose machines may be down for the count uh, as service uptime builds, depending on the uh, maintenance contract that our customers have. Uh, we also support our marketing efforts to build sample parts and uh, show pieces for trade shows and for our individual offices. But today I want to focus on uh, my biggest internal customer, and that is our 3D printed uh, 3D printing services group, which is led by Luke Yastuer. Very serious in this picture. That's a little better. Um, so most of the production uh, of 3D printed parts happens here in Pleasant Ridge. Uh, this is the former headquarters of Fisher Unitech, and uh, we have here almost every available Stratasys machine um, with additional capacity scattered throughout our other 34 offices from coast to coast. Now, um, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, these days, anyone can 3D print a part. Um, and I appreciate Heather hitting print on a build just this afternoon for me. Um, Stratasys really takes the guesswork out of the whole process with uh, softwares like GrabCAD Print really streamlining the flow. And uh, essentially, when you buy a Stratasys machine, you're paying for 35 years of someone else's experience dialing in all those settings. But to be honest, these days, even cheap hobby printers can make the process pretty easy, even if the results aren't always ideal. Now, what isn't so easy is navigating the trade-offs that are inherent to additive manufacturing. Like it or not, there isn't one technology, one material, one process that's ideal in every scenario. And unfortunately, it takes time and experience to identify the best technology, the best material, and the best build parameters for a given application. And within an application, every single part has its own unique challenges. That experience is hard won, and that is what we bring to 3D printing services here at CATI. I'll let this uh, video finish our tour of our office here before we move on. We're very proud of this office. All right, so the question is, when is it the right time to uh, engage 3D printed services. Uh, and in a nutshell, kind of any time, uh, especially for our customers who might be on the call now, uh, if you're over capacity, your, your, your demand has outstripped your, um, your supply of, uh, of 3D print capacity, give us a call. If your machine is currently down for whatever reason and you're in a jam, give us a call. Uh, and for the rest of you, if you need parts for a given project, but you're not ready to pull the trigger on a printer, give us a call. Now, of course, we are we don't expect you to know all of the details about how a given part is going to be printed. And again, that's that's the experience that we bring to the equation and we'd like to think is unique in the uh, in the industry. Uh, we'll work with you uh, to identify what would be best for your specific application. Um, but what I'd like to focus on here today is uh, an outline of all of the technologies and the materials available for those uh, that we offer in 3D printing services here at CATI. Uh, I'm going to keep this fairly brief, but I'll, uh, I'll identify some of the particulars of each material and technology as we go. So we'll begin with FDM technology. This is sort of the most ubiquitous technology in, in additive manufacturing. Uh, it's it's what you can buy at Micro Center or on Amazon, uh, generally speaking. This is the uh, uh, sort of weed whacker filament uh, that gets pushed through essentially a hot glue gun uh, to build uh, tool paths of, of part layer by layer stacked one on top of another. Um, using Stratasys technology, we're also building with usually uh, water soluble materials uh, for support structures uh, that, that allows us to build a whole lot more flexibility in terms of the part geometry uh, than might be available on some other systems. So uh, this technology works really well for applications that need to be uh, fairly robust, fairly durable. Uh, FDM 
uses thermoplastics, uh, which are common to the industry, such as ABS and what you see on, on screen here. And uh, so the material properties are fairly well understood. So uh, within our material offerings here, we have uh, the fairly standard ABS and ASA materials. Uh, these are essentially our, our cheapest options, um, but that doesn't make them uh, a poor option. Um, sometimes we'll, uh, we'll also suggest PLA, uh, polylactic acid, as a ultra low cost option, though those uses are, are fairly limited. Uh, stepping up from there, we have some slightly higher performance materials like PCABS, which is a, an amalgam of polycarbonate, um, who you might know as, um, as Lexan, uh, a very durable material, but blended with a more ductile material, ABS. Uh, materials like uh, nylon and uh, with and without carbon fiber filled, uh, they offer more durability and with nylon 12 CF, really unprecedented stiffness. Uh, for those high load applications. Um, other materials like Duran are excellent, well suited for tooling applications. And then we get into the really high performance uh, Ultim, polyetheramide materials and uh, Antero PEC. Um, these are especially well suited for high heat applications and, and other also applications that, uh, that require uh, parts to be in contact with, uh, with chemicals. Um, the downside to FDM is its resolution. Uh, the layer thickness in FDM is inherently limited by the flow characteristics of thermoplastic materials. Um, so we can get a resolution uh, down to about five thousandths of an inch, although ten thousandths of an inch is, is uh, more typical. Ten thousandths of an inch is 250 microns, just to keep those unit systems in check. When higher resolution is necessary, then it's time to shift into polyjet technology. Uh, this is a resin-based technology that uses thermoset materials. Uh, so these, these won't melt like thermoplastics will, um, though they do soften when they're uh, exposed to really high temperatures. But where this technology really excels is in uh, tangible um, prototype models. So you can see here a lot of examples of uh, packaging and, um, and consumer products for which uh, the alternative is a lot of expensive and time consuming, um, uh, what's usually re referred to as, um, sorry, I'm blanking on the word, uh, model making, there we go. With polyjet technology, we can build uh, multiple materials all at the same time. And by blending materials of different colors and with different properties, we can vary the color and properties within a part baked right into the part. So all of these uh, as seen are as printed. Some of them also have had some post-processing finish work done to sand them up and gloss them, maybe a, a, a spray of, of clear coat. Uh, but polyjet materials include the Vero materials, which are cyan, magenta, uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, white, um, some of which are translucent and uh, can be blended to match any color. 24-bit uh, color depth. Agilus 30, which is available in white, clear, and black, and can be the substrate for any combination of those Vero materials. Uh, this adds a, a softness by blending this 30 durometer material with the rigid Vero materials. Uh, we can get any range of durometer between 30 and 95 with a little bit more flexibility up, uh, sorry, a little bit more uh, variant options up near the uh, the higher end of that spectrum. Digital ABS is a special blend of materials that's meant to simulate many of the properties of ABS. It's uh, resistant to heat more so than the other materials, and so that makes it suitable for uh, some tooling applications like short run injection mold tooling, that sort of thing. Duras White and, uh, and its uh, brother um, Rigor uh, are meant to simulate many of the properties of uh, polypropylene in that they have a lot more ductility. They are able to flex without breaking. And so they're more suitable than the uh, some of the more brittle Vero materials for applications that re require repeated flexing, like snap fits and that sort of thing. And a new material called Vero Ultra Clear, um, which has uh, unprecedented translucence, uh, especially when, when photo bleached after printing. 
Now, when there are uh, when there is demand for uh, a very high quantity of parts, then we start talking about powdered materials. Uh, nylon 12, um, PA standing for uh, poly, polyamide, nylon 12 uh, can be sintered in either multi-jet fusion or uh, similar technologies. We will have uh, Stratasys's new SAF technology with the H350 in-house shortly. Um, these, uh, this technology is particularly well suited for applications that require uh, very little in the color uh, spectrum. Uh, everything's going to be various shades of, uh, of black or gray, um, but where very high quantities are required. Uh, because the way that this technology works, uh, there's essentially uh, no reduction in, in throughput, no matter how many parts you build at once. As long as they fit inside of the machine, it'll still run in, say, 24 hours, whether you're building a big part like the one on the left or hundreds of small parts like on the right. Um, and this is where a, uh, the, the, the cost-benefit ratio really, really starts to shift a little bit. Um, if you're only building one or two parts, this may not be the right technology, but if you're building 50 to 100, uh, something less than where injection molding might make sense, uh, multi-jet fusion makes a bit more, uh, more financial sense. Similarly, stereolithography fits in some other niches, uh, depending on what resin is used. Uh, this is also a, a thermoset resin, similar to polyjet, but it's, uh, it's cured a little bit differently. I won't go into the details of how the technology works, um, but there is a lot of different chemistries available in those resins. Um, here in this office in Pleasant Ridge, we have uh, Somos Watershed, uh, which is a, quite a durable material that's also clear um, and with a little bit of elbow grease and, uh, and a, a spray of clear coat uh, can be made almost glass clear. For applications that require a bit more clarity, um, Somos Water Clear is an option as well. Um, materials for uh, that simulate polypropylene, like the flex feature that you see on the on the upper right, um, is available through Somos Next, and uh, the other uh, Protogen and uh, SC1000P uh, fill similar other niches. Uh, stereolithography is also particularly well suited to um, to very large uh, burnout castings. Uh, selective laser sintering is a very similar technology to multi-jet uh, that we saw earlier, um, but it does allow a bit more flexibility in terms of color and material options. Uh, so we can see the familiar nylon 12 available here, um, but that can be uh, that can be augmented with various fiber fills. Uh, so we can use glass fiber uh, load in with that powder mix in order to increase the um, uh, the the stiffness of the part, glass fiber or carbon fiber. Um, there's also uh, options for uh, car uh, metal fibers, um, et cetera. There are a lot of options there, uh, all of which are intended to uh, adjust the mechanical properties of that native nylon 12, maybe to increase the uh, increase the heat deflection temperature, the amount of heat that the uh, the part can be exposed to before it starts to deform, um, or increase the, uh, the stiffness at room temperature. Um, it's also possible to print uh, thermoplastic elastomers, TPE materials, in this technology. Uh, there are two options available, uh, Shore A60 and a Shore A90, if memory serves. So these are great options, again, particularly well suited for uh, fairly high volumes um, and certain geometries that may cause problems with cleaning either in polyjet or, or FDM technologies are a bit less of a challenge using any of these uh, powder-based um, technologies because the, uh, the powder which acts as a support material can be simply dumped out. Now on the uh, metal side of things, uh, we can print with uh, a fairly wide gamut of, of materials, the most common being aluminum, uh, which can be tricky to print with, uh, stainless steels in, uh, in the two grades listed, although I believe there, uh, there may be some others available shortly. Uh, we also expect to have copper available to us uh, in the coming months. Now, these are all excellent um, 
fits if you don't have the material available on your machine or if you have a particular application and aren't real sure where to go with that. Um, but sometimes you need really big parts. Um, well, we've got you covered there too. Uh, we have the uh, F900, which is the, the biggest printer available um, from Stratasys, uh, as well as the F770, um, sort of a neck and neck race between those two. They have slightly different footprints, but, um, but very similar build volumes. Um, but if you have a part that's uh, three feet long by two feet wide, there's no other option uh, if you want accuracy of plus or minus five thousandths of an inch uh, than the Stratasys F900. And uh, on Polyjet, if you need that ultra high resolution, uh, we can we typically build at uh, 28 micron layer thickness, uh, but we can go down to 14 microns, uh, which is, uh, I believe, about a third the uh, the diameter of a human hair. Uh, so uh, we we do have a lot of offerings, and we are prepared and uh, and eager to work with you uh, to find the best technology and material fit for you and make sure that your uh, your next project involving additive manufacturing is a success. Um, this is a, a bit of our team here. We have Luke on the right again, and uh, myself, uh, Ryan Hennigan, standing, and uh, our application engineer in this office, um, who you may work with if you're interested in uh, buying a printer, Simon Pinter in the middle. Um, and here we're standing in front of the F770, which we got just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we've been really putting through its paces.